Thanks, Claire. Okay. <laughs> welcome, Hi. welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to catch up, like, how your year has been, what's... What's new and it's exciting? It's been good. It's been yeah. really good. Um, first of all, can I say this boat is amazing. <laughs> I'm just like loving it. It's so That's cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's been a really interesting year for me, actually. Um, lots of kind of highlights and maybe eventful year is the word. Okay. I've had quite a lot of interesting trips, which I could tell you about some of them. Um, I think probably the key this year for me has been building a relationship with Anjuna Deep. Oh, okay. Um, awesome. Yeah, which I've been working on over kind of the last two years, but it's really kind of cemented this year. So I started with a single and then I, then I did a remix of Antic. Um, and I've now got, finally got my full artist EP coming on Anjuna Deep at the end of November. So, um, and I've started playing for some of their events. So I did their um, Explorations Festival in Albania, which was one of the very wow. interesting <laughs> ones. Um, yeah, and I've played for them in London and I did their Soho radio takeover in London as well. So I've started to kind of become one of the family there, which is really good, obviously. So that's been a big thing yeah, for this year. Yeah, that's new. And yeah. how did that start out? Um, it started out a couple of years ago, actually, that they just came to me and asked for some music. So I've been, I've been working with them for a while and I did two singles last year. Um, but we never got to a stage where I was ready for an EP, but obviously we've we've reached that stage now, so that's quite cool. Yeah, so that comes out at the end of November, which is that's exciting. exciting. Are yeah. you um, doing music for other? Yeah, I'm also working on, um, actually I've just confirmed a release with Global Underground. Um, so I don't know if you know, my track Follow You Down is mm -hmm. one of the bigger, bigger tracks that I've done. Um, which is me on vocals as well um, and obviously that was on Global Underground and it did quite well so we've now done a follow-up so it's another kind of big vocal track that I've done where I'm singing myself um, and we've just confirmed that but we're just working on remixes of that at the moment so hopefully that will come out early next year as well um, and then there's a couple of other things that I've kind of got signed but not not signed <laughs> so I can't say anything yet so which is frustrating but yeah so I've got quite a few like releases coming up now which is good are you putting, yeah, it seems like uh, very selective, like on releases of the, um, the partnerships you're making. Yeah, or? I think so. I, th I feel like it's quite impor important to have a kind of a family label and relationships with labels. But then I'm still sending stuff out to smaller labels yeah. and friends. And I'm hopefully doing another EP on Syncopat as well, which is a label that I really like. Yeah. So, And of course, my own label, Constant Circles as well. Um, so I'm doing some stuff on that. How's Constant Circles going? Good. Yeah. Hard work. Like, yeah. yeah, doing your own label is is hard work and doesn't really make me any money, but it's something that I really love to do. So I'm still sticking with it. And it's still, it's gradually gaining momentum. And, you know, we do like um, visual art as well. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of a twist to it. And we've done a couple of art exhibitions. So, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I mean, that's hard. That's a lot of hard work. So, yeah, and I do it all by myself. So, you, yeah, yeah, at the moment. Um, so I've spread myself quite thin, really, but it's I really enjoy it. So and I think it's important for me to have a, my own brand as well that runs alongside me as an artist. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. What um, What is your scheduling like? Like you're touring pretty often when you're in yeah, the studio? Yeah, yeah. Do you like, take time off to be like, this is studio time? I'm or? quite disciplined actually yeah. at home um, and luckily well my partner works from home and we both kind of have scheduled days and yeah she makes me get up out of bed and like, yeah, work so yeah, yeah. Um, so that's quite good um, but yeah I'm, I kind of just make sure that I schedule my time during the day and I normally try and get up I've actually this year been doing going off slightly off topic here but I've started getting up at, at um, half past five and doing like a morning routine yeah um, you know, involving journaling and meditation and stuff, and then going straight into the studio by seven o'clock and doing that um, production in the morning, which is supposedly your most yeah. creative time. And I've, yeah, I've got quite into that and it's, it's working really well. And then it leaves me the rest of the afternoon to do label stuff or whatever else I've got going on. Um, and yeah, I just have to kind of fit that in around touring really, because I have, through the summer, I had really hectic schedule tours so I've been all over the place and yeah like I was saying so had some super show, eventful show, things but like the Albania it's story. got to the point where now my management are like you need to start writing these down and yeah, like start writing a book should. like a DJ memoir kind of book so I have I've taken a little notebook with me now and started writing down things that have happened so like Albania was incredible it's one of the best events that I've ever played at um, what was it like it was in Dermy and it there was five five stages and each stage was like in a little cove 
like down the coast and it oh was my just gosh, so stunning. Crazy. yeah so you go down like a little path and then there's a stage on the beach and then you walk along the coast and there's another one and it was it was just so stunningly beautiful um but yeah and it, it was really interesting when I after I did my set I was walking back to my hotel and I got chased by a pack of wild dogs oh, no. <laughs> and like literally cornered oh God, that's so scary yeah it was one of the scariest things I've ever experienced yeah. and they were I was like literally having to kick them off my my shins uh, and not knowing what to do it was like one o'clock in the morning um and then eventually a guy ran out of a restaurant and like threw some stones at them and they all <laughs> ran away and I just ran <laughs> into a hotel and cried um, so yeah, there's been a few things like that, and then I played I played Noisily Festival in the UK as well a couple of weeks after that, which again was one of the best events that I did this oh. year. Uh, it was really cool. It's like all in a woodland in the UK and um, very sort of hippie Burning Man vibes. Um, but yeah, and I, that was I played an amazing set at that, and then when we went to go home, we found that the car had broken down, <laughs> and uh, we had to call a tow truck to come and pull us out. But because it had rained overnight, the tow truck then got stuck. <laughs> in the mud trying to pull us out in the middle of the car park and then we kind of ground the whole festival to a halt um with our car so that was interesting so um, it's more of these outside scenarios that happen too it's exactly. like things that people don't realize are happening behind the scenes you know um because it all obviously looks very glamour glamorous on social media but yeah but it's all part of the fun so it's fine i played another gig as well in um in murmansk which is a very northern tip of russia and that was another interesting one that I did this year because there was no night time there. It was yeah. like the polar, I can't remember what they, what they call it, where it's just daylight yeah. the whole time. So it was like That's really com confusing. Uh, yeah, and really cold in the middle of summer <laughs> as well. I was like a bit confused by that one. Um, so yeah, I've just done some really interesting. So you just interesting. only booked at like really strange, <laughs> interesting places. Yeah, I know. And then I've done India as well, which is always great. Um, and of course, we were talking earlier saying that I got my USA visa finally. Oh, so, nice. yeah, 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 so I've done two tours in the States this year as well and hoping to go out early next year for the next one. That's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Which has taken a while to, to get the visa. Yeah. So it's good that I finally, finally managed it. Yeah, you got that yeah. for sure. Um, so what, how do you feel like with your, your music now? Is a certain direction? Are you... Um, it's a tricky question that yeah. because I, I try to not be pigeonholed into sorry, right. um, into a, like a particular sound, and I was kind of, I was kind of concerned that people thought I only did deep melodic vocally kind of stuff, so I've tried to make some things that are a little bit different. Some of the stuff I've done recently is a bit more techno, a bit more house. Some of it, I think. Underneath it, I'm always going to be like deep melodic yes. at heart. It's always going to have that element of that. But I'm just trying to do some slightly different things just to show that I've got a bit more in my palette than, than just that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you find it like you have just that focus when you get in the studio that you know? Do you ever end up just going off? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of the time I'll start with something in my head and then it's gone in a completely different direction. I think you've just got to go with it. I think I was making a mistake previously of having a label in my head and thinking, right, I want to make something of this sound and then getting frustrated with myself because it perhaps wasn't coming out how I wanted to. And I think now I've started thinking, right, I'm just going to get in the studio, you know, in my morning sessions and just let it flow. And whatever comes out, you then can see where does it fit, you know, where can we send it rather than having it yeah. in my head before I start. Um, yeah. Yeah. And what else, like something you've learned, you know, that you would tell somebody who is starting producing? that you um, have to learn the hard way maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah god I mean there's so much it, it's it's not easy I suppose that's a bit negative it's it's not an easy industry to break into now and I think the most important thing is just patience and and being humble I think as well you know just staying grounded and, and grateful for anything that you get any opportunities that you get in the industry um and yeah and being patient and consistent I think um because it's taken me a long time just to get to the point that I'm at now yeah um but it's been kind of a lot of determination just consistently through all that time which has got me here yeah if that's helpful yeah no <laughs> it is yeah. I um I hear patience a lot I think that's a good answer because I think that's a hard thing now yeah. everybody kind of just expects things yeah. well yeah exactly and yeah and I know you can get quick breakthroughs but I think most of the time it's people that have worked consistently for a long period of time yeah. that actually gets you just don't see their backstory exactly <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah and I know you do a lot like in the community as well you just started a project right for um 
for children for learning music? oh yeah yeah, yeah. my charity the charity that i'm working yeah. with yeah the little beam foundation is a friend back home who's started this charity working with kids get to get access to mental health support which i think is really important um so i'm kind of a music ambassador for that and seeing how we can help you know use music to help kids with mental health issues um yeah i mean i just feel like we should be using if you have any kind of platform we should be trying to use it as best we can to do as much good as we can with it so um i'm trying to be a bit more vocal with my feelings on things and um and just trying to spread positivity really as much as possible that's what i'm trying to do anyway <laughs> it's a lot to um, go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also I think just we all need to be kinder to each other and I want to be kind of like an ambassador for that as much as, as I can. I've been saying that a lot online recently um, because there's too much negativity and there's too many people criticising each other and I, d I don't understand that. Yeah. I don't get why people take time out of their day <laughs> to kind of write nasty comments to someone. Um, so I've been saying to everyone, let's just support each other as much as we can over the top just so that we drown everything else out and that's the only tactic I can think of <laughs> um so yeah yeah I love that yeah, yeah. Any, um anything <laughs> else you want to um not that I can think of yeah um I love that though anything yeah about. doing it well better as a community and yeah uh, yeah I think we've got the chance to kind of make a really big difference the, the electronic music community as a whole you know we've got such a big online presence um, and yeah, we need to be just doing as much good with it as we can. I appreciate that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Claire.